Hello, my friends. It's Art History Week, and I decided it might be fun to go outside. Today, we are going to learn about an artist who's an artist and a musician. Do you make art and music? Do you play an instrument? He did. He was from Russia, and his name was Vasily Kandinsky. We are gonna learn all about him when we read this book. Very fun. But first, it's important that we look at some of his art. Now on this page of this book, we can see there's a lot of different things going on. Lots of colors, lots of shapes, lots of really cool things. Surprisingly, this book does not show his most famous work of art, which is a book, I'm sorry, a painting all about a certain type of shape. I'm gonna show you what's going on here. It's a shape inside a shape, inside a shape, kind of this one, the circles. He loved the circles. He only did circles. I wish I had an example for you, but I don't. So why don't we make one? So his was all circles, kind of reminds me of the Target logo or when I do archery. What does it remind you of? Hmm. Now these shapes are called concentric shapes. It's a math word. Yeah, it means a shape inside the same shape, inside the same shape that share the same center. So there are lots of ways to do this. You could make a grid. Again, here's some math. We could fold our paper. Many art teachers call this the hot dog fold. Yeah, it's a tall fold, horizontal. Now, I like to do it this way. You sort of judge fractions. What is a third? I don't know. I'll tuck that under. It is not equal on three sides, but it will work. And look, I made a Z. Maybe it goes that way for you, yeah. A Z. So I can open this up and I can try to draw my concentric shapes. I'm gonna start with just a circle. Now what's fun about this though, is that each little space sort of acts as a way to bleed off. We know a lot about shapes. We've talked about hearts. So you could make a candy cane and then another candy cane. And you could make one on the inside and go around. Whoop. Now I'm using an oil pastel. You could use a crayon. You could use a lot of things. When it's time for me to add color, I could either, oh look, a star. Did we learn how to do a star on Van Gogh Day? We did. So you could try that. Does anyone know what that one's called? Could you email me or message me and tell me what it's called? Cause I made it up. I don't think it has a name. So you can make your own shape if you'd like. Now, if you're someone who likes to either color or paint this, I want you to try the hop around. The hop around is when you are feeling tired. Is anyone feeling tired? Mm. Sometimes we get tired, especially if you didn't get enough exercise. Now, the hop around is when you hop around. Like, I don't feel like cleaning my brush. I don't feel like adding a different color. I just want to stick with pink, but I'm hopping around. You know what's funny? I think you might be able to hear. Upstairs, my kids are listening to circle round. Okay. I've moved on to blue. Now, if you like this grid, you would finish this up. I'll finish mine later. But maybe you don't want to do it like that. Maybe you want to go a little loose. Remember, Kandinsky was a painter and a musician, but you know what's unusual? He also... So maybe we just want to paint some shapes. 
Kandinsky also could hear color, he said. We're gonna read a story about that shortly. So maybe he could hear this pink feeling. What does it sound like? I don't know. Having the ability to hear color or see music is a special way to use your brain. And Kandinsky had that, it's called synesthesia. We're gonna read a book about that. Pretty cool. Now he was really interested in how color, kind of like Alma Thomas from yesterday, and line worked together. So you could just do that. Lots of repetition and playing with color and space. It's really fun. So that's one way to do it. This is called abstract art. So we know this might mean that you can do whatever you want. We don't know what this is. Let's read a story about it. Oh, but wait, I did this one. And I want to show you what it looks like. So sometimes art takes a lot of time, a lot of time. I worked really hard on this. I did my concentric circles and then I worked carefully in my background space. And as my students, we say, a background space is a negative space. Do you see my background space? There's a spot all the little white spaces and I made sure to color them in. Today we're going to read The Noisy Paint Box, all about Kandinsky and his abstract art. Vasya Kandinsky spent his days learning to be a proper young Russian boy. He studied bookfuls of math, science, and history. Have you done that? He practiced piano scales to the marching click of the metronome. He sat stiff and straight at dressed up dinners while the grown-ups talked and talked and talked. Grown-ups do that sometimes, don't they? Yeah, me too. Vasya's well-off world was perfectly polite until the day his aunt gave him a small wooden paintbrush. I mean paint box. Every proper Russian boy should appreciate aunt, said his aunt. I said aunt, didn't I? I meant art. I'm making lots of mistakes today. Have you made mistakes today? She showed Vasya the correct way to mix colors on the paint box palette. Now, if you would like to mix colors today, I suggest you try it on your paper. That's what I do. I take different colors and I mix them right on my paper. Vasya mixed red with yellow, and then he mixed red with blue, huh? Red and yellow make orange. Red and blue make, that's right, purple. We know those primary colors. And the colors change, Basia heard a whisper, hiss. Louder, hiss. Then louder still, hiss. Basia painted the sound of the colors. He spun a bright lemon circle onto the canvas. It clinked like the highest notes on a keyboard. He brushed a powerful navy rectangle that vibrated deeply against the lowest cello strings. He tossed up jagged swashes of blaring crimson and added cheerful dots of burbling green, clanging orange and tinkling violet. Vasya painted and painted until the colors went quiet. What I made, shouted Fasia. Is it a house? Asked Auntie, is it a flower? Asked Mama, what is it supposed to be? Asked Papa, it's music, said Fasia, waltzing his painting around the house. Calm down, said Mama. 
do some math, said Papa. Heavens, said Auntie, this boy needs a proper art class. So Vasya went to art class to learn how to draw houses and flowers, just like everyone else. As the years passed, Vasya finished school and studied to be a lawyer. He ignored his noisy paint rocks and he lived the way people expected. But Vasya couldn't ignore the sounds of the colors singing to him in the streets of Moscow. Oh, this is a good page. The canary colored mailbox whistling as he rode to work. The scarlet sunset haze ringing above the ancient Kremlin walls. An ivory chorus of snowflakes scattered on the sable collar of his overcoat. It's beautiful, isn't it? I love the names of all the colors. Scarlet instead of red. Canary instead of yellow. Can you name your colors? Vasya was never quite proper again. He quit his job teaching law and moved from Moscow to Munich to be a painter. He studied with this famous teacher and that famous teacher. And they said things like, is it a house? Is it a flower? What is it supposed to be? Vasya wanted to paint the colors he heard. Maybe the famous teachers knew best. Once again, Vasya put houses and flowers and animals and people into his paintings just like everyone expected. The teachers were happy. Vasya was not. What should he do? Should he paint for his teachers or should he paint for himself? Let's see what happens. His artist friends understood. They were too tired of painting pretty landscapes and pretty ladies. They thought art needed to change. Art should make you feel, Vasya told them, like music. Exactly, said his friends, but none of them knew how to paint feelings until the day that Vasya grew brave enough. All these artists had to be so brave and invited the world to see paintings roaring from his noisy paint box. snapping cerulean points, crunching crimson squares, whispering charcoal lines. Vasya named these paintings after the music that he loved. Improvisation, composition, accompaniment, fugue, movement, and simply three sounds. With his noisy paint box, Vasya Kandinsky created something entirely new, abstract art. What does abstract mean? It took a long time for people to understand. Is it a house? Is it a flower? What is it supposed to be? It is my art, Fasia answered. How does it make you feel? So when I think about the one I finished or the one I painted with you or the one I started with you, or the very beginning, they all make me happy. And you don't know what this is. It sort of looks like it might be, I don't know, a bag of Skittles or eyes going into a different universe. But we don't know because abstract art means, I don't know, it's a bunch of pictures and lines and shapes and all the ingredients that make art color too, right? So I'm excited to see what you are going to create today. And I'm so glad you're here. I love that you're here. Don't forget to subscribe below. I'll see you here later.